It's one final duel for the Clay Center Tigers before they hit the postseason. Tiger Wrestling is here in a Thursday night at NCKL matchup on the road against the Concordia Panthers. Tiger Wrestlers wrestle tonight and they get set for regional competition to begin a week from tomorrow. Stay with us. Our pre-match talk is on the way with Coach Brandon Pagorge. Tiger Wrestling at Concordia here on KCLY. It's February, so get to Robbins Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram Fiat to see how much you can save during Ram Truck Month. When you test drive a new 2019 Ram Truck, you'll see why it's Motor Trends Truck of the Year. Or test drive a new Wrangler Unlimited, Motor Trends SUV of the Year. Robbins Motors is veteran-owned and military-friendly. They have the biggest selection of new Rams and Jeeps in the area. They're on West Anderson in Manhattan and online at RobbinsMotors.com. Robbins Motors is a proud supporter of Tiger Wrestling. Since 2011, Catalyst Sign and Graphics have been covering the Clay Center area with slick-looking designs on logos, banners, yard signs, and vehicle and fleet wraps. Whatever you're advertising or promoting, Catalyst Sign can create something unique and eye-catching for the results you want. View their work on their Facebook page or visit the website at katsigns.com. Catalyst Sign and Graphics, proud backers of the Clay Center Tiger Wrestlers. Call 785-320-7633. For any electrical wiring for home, farm, or business, let Advanced Electric put their expertise to work for you. Through many years of experience, owner Matt Thompson has the skills you can trust to handle anything from new construction of your dream home to remodeling projects for home or businesses, whether large or small. Make sure you keep their number handy, 630-0060. Again, 630-0060. Advanced Electric, the name to remember when you're looking for a really great electrical contractor. The agronomy professionals at Wilbur Ellis are ready to help you clean up your fields and prepare for winter in the coming spring. Now's the time to find out what your soil needs to keep up with the nutrient needs of the next crop. Wilbur Ellis has many site-specific soil test and mapping options, as well as standard soil testing. Plus, applying fertilizer in the fall will decrease the chance of loss and congestion for next spring's crops. I'm Blaze with Wilbur Ellis. We're here to serve you in every season. Getting set for Tiger Wrestling tonight on KCLY at Concordia. A dual action against the Panthers in the NCKL. In fact, the final duel before the postseason arrives. We're joined by the head coach of the Clay Center Tiger Wrestling Program, Brandon Pigorish. Coach, thanks for the time as we get set for tonight's matchup against Concordia. Let's talk a little bit about uh, coming off the Rose Hill Invitational before we look into tonight's matchup. Uh, you're shorthanded right now. I think most Tiger fans know that, but maybe those just tuning in for tonight's uh, broadcast, uh, you're, you are piecing together the, the guys and gals that can go for you, and, and they're giving it their all, and, and I know you feel good about what they're bringing to the mat. Yeah, you know, trying to piece together a team at this part of the year is something that's, I guess, really not uncommon. Just you know, wrestling is kind of a grind. The season can be long, but it's gone really fast, so it's kind of odd to be talking about end of the year and postseason <laughs> now. But, but as we go, you know, uh, finished up at Rose Hill, probably one of the toughest, if not the toughest, tournament on our schedule um, of the season. You know, we kind of had it at the end, and two-day tournament went down, wrestled a lot of good teams and got a lot of good um, competitive matches, which is what our guys needed, so we were able to, um, you know, just build some shape and, and some timing as we get late into the season, and you know, went out there and kind of find some some small things we need to work on before we hit the postseason. So, um, get a chance tonight to wrestle our last duel against Concordia, a league team, and, and we're looking forward to just you know getting another chance to go out and compete. And every opportunity the kids get. If they were, uh, you know, in a wrestle somebody different other than themselves, there's a chance they can learn and, and get better. And so that's kind of what we're looking at tonight. Um, we're going to have some opens, but, you know, ultimately, uh, you know, against like Abilene Duel, we had a lot of opens and went out and won more matches, and then we lost. And, you know, so that's kind of our team, team's focus tonight, just going out and winning as many matches as we can and, and taking those into the postseason. Parker Tholstrup is back and, and going strong. He's ranked number five in the state to no surprise after the year he had last year. And he battles through some some injuries. He's kind of used to that in, in his way of life. But he is some kind of wrestler at 132, 21 and 7. Uh, so nice to see him back and, and, and apparently in, in, in pretty good health right now, right? Yeah, he's doing okay. Um, 
in terms of health, yeah, he finished sixth at Rose Hill last weekend. Just a couple small things that, that you know, he's kind of used to carrying with him every day in terms of injuries. But um, he's had a really good season so far, um, has, has beaten some really good kids, and has been right in there with some, some of the best kids in the state. So we're, we're looking forward to seeing what he can do here as we approach the postseason. And, and very proud of him and, and the way his season's gone so far. Reed Nitter at 138 has been right around that state-ranked mark all season. 27 wins for the senior, and uh, he continues to just bring it and get better. And he seems to to kind of come into his own this time of year, which I know you like as a coach when the postseason rolls around. Yeah, he's, he's definitely um, up to with his competitiveness and just his focus at the end of the season. Um, I'm looking for that again from him here in his senior campaign, but he's done a really nice job this season. Uh, you know, he's got the most wins on our team right now, um, and, you know, he's been in a lot of hard-fought matches. So hoping the experience he's had in the past can, can bring him some success and some uh, into the state tournament twice, and hopefully we get a third trip back and, and we bring home some hardware this time. I thought maybe worth uh, mentioning Logan McDonald, too. He's posted 23 wins, and uh, you, you told him and told him, take your lumps freshman, sophomore, but just keep coming after it. And, and we, we've seen some really good things from him this season. Absolutely. Um, Logan has a great attitude um, and a really good work ethic. And, um, you know, he's, he's a great kid to coach. Um, he's done a great job, made some um, you know, huge strides in the terms of from where he was at last year to where he's at now and the wins and losses on him. Um, as well as just his competitive mindset. So, um, you know, we're looking for big things out of Logan. He's um, you know, been in there for us all year long, has, has had to, to win some duels for us. So um, he definitely, um, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do. I still think his best wrestling is yet to come, and, and hopefully we'll get to see it here in the next couple of weeks. And I know that uh, Rhett Coppice, who has been state-ranked, number one ranked for most of the year, people haven't heard his name mentioned much, and we haven't talked about him yet because he's been out with injury, but he's getting close to being back, right? Yeah, Rhett ready to go um we're just kind of locked in on what the next couple of weeks have in store for us um he, you know he's he's wanting to go it's more of a coaching decision on on holding him out uh, in terms of tonight um but he's 26 and 2 on the year um yeah has been ranked number one he's currently ranked third at 106 um but you know or his expectation for himself is to win a state title. That's his goal, and and I think he's going to get there. He he's got a great work ethic. I mean, even through um, being banged up and injured, he's he's been putting in a lot of time, a lot of effort um, to just make himself better and get to where he wants to be. And so, you know, I'm looking for for good things out of him as, as we approach this this postseason as well. Coach, looking forward to the duel tonight at Concordia. As always, we appreciate the time, and uh, let's go get him tonight. All right, sounds good, Rocky. Appreciate you covering it. Back with the live coverage from Concordia on the way next. Hey, folks. Since we've added our new display lot downtown Clay Center, people are saying we have the best deals on Highway 15 and 24, and we think so, too. So give us a chance to earn your business, and just for coming in, we're going to buy you dinner at the 1524 Brew House. That's right, just give us a chance and we're going to buy you lunch. So come out and see us. You got nothing to lose. You're going to get a great deal and a great meal. So come see us at the Green Team in Clay Center. And a good evening. Welcome to Concordia High School, where the Clay Center Tigers have their final duel before the regional wrestling championships begin a week from tomorrow. Rocky Downing along with studio engineer Bernie Fancella. Benny Wallace alongside Benito. Thanks for making the road trip with us. We are underway as Garrett Calavota takes the mat. At 106 pounds against Sage and Kim Lane. Sajin came out pretty strong, goes over that uh, high crotch, lifts, elevates her right on the edge of the mat. Garrett's trying to get out, but it's close. Still no points given. Still now they're out. It dead. Now they will. Garrett was about to roll out of the uh, deep shot in there by Kim Lane. Both of these wrestlers were actually Calavota freshman, Kim Lane a sophomore. And 21 and 9. Garrett did a good job of countering that off because he was in pretty deep. Sajin was. And Pulled it up, lifted him completely off the mat. Double leg in now by Kim Lee, but blocked off by Calavota. Although he got a front headlock, but he can't quite get it. Sajin takes him to the mat and to his back. They are close to the edge of the out-of-bounds line. Can't quite get there. Kim Lee trying to push him back into the side of the mat. Now he does, and he's got it in there very, very tight. 
Kimbling of Concordia, 21 and 9, a sophomore. Oh, he's covering his face. Uh, can't do that. <laughs> got, a, got him down on his back pretty good. Garrett's doing a good job of trying to keep from being pinned here. Just continues to bridge up and bridge up. Kimling now working around to the front, 54 to work first period. Showing good strength there, Garrett did to get out of that because he really got caught and got in trouble when he couldn't get off his back. Then Sajin did a good job of uh, covering him really hard and and Garrett Calavota did a great job of getting away from there. First match of the night, Calavota from the down position, trailing 5 nothing under a minute to go in the first period. Sajin starts on the left side and easily chops the arm and goes in there and gets a lunging. Now he's going into a ball and chain. That's not there, so he lets go of that. Emily working from the top position now with a 5 nothing lead on Garrett Calavota for the Tigers. Wrestling at 106, Red Cop is still injured. Could have gone tonight. You heard Coach Begore say that, but... They want to keep him healthy going into regionals next week. Garrett got to his feet, but Satan quickly tripped him back down to the mat. He's right got on that one. Now he's trying to tilt him. That's not there. Garrett doing a good job of counter defense, but he just got to get something going offensively. Down to seven seconds left in the first period. Now trying to sit out as he tips back a bit and has to roll back onto his front side. Two seconds, one second, and that will end the first period. Calavota will trail 5-0. Well, he got a little bit behind here, but he's got a lot of time to make it up, and he's done a good job so far just from getting, not getting pinned there in the first period. Kimling has choice and will take the down position, so Calavoto will be having a chance to ride for the first time tonight. Goes to the left side. Sajin tries an outside switch and does a good job of stopping that. Now he's got that Lundy in. Nope, he let go of the wrist. He's trying to get it broke down again. Just there. underway, second period. Garrett's got a knee in the hole. He's covering pretty well right now. He's got a far side arm trying to hold that inside leg from getting anywhere. Kimling does stand to his feet. Now back down to the mat as Calavota keeps him in place. Now out to the side, Calavota works. Kimling again to his feet, trying to break the hands up top. Garrett kind of trying to spiral and just took Sajin right to his feet, but he gets him broke down to the mat again. Now it looks like he's got the Lundy, but they're on the away from us, so we can't hardly see. A minute 20 to go, second period. Calavota trailing 5-0, opening match of the night. Sajin so far just playing a defensive down man, and Garrett's trying hard to get something going, but nothing's happened so far. Kimbling to his feet now and peeling the hands. Calavota yeah, staying in pretty good position, though. Now Warren for stalling. Garrett Calavota as they near the edge of the mat. So back to center they come with a minute two to go in the first period. Calavoto starts to get on that left side, tries to chop the arm. Sajin's trying to roll through. Got to watch. He's got a Gramby hooked up. If he can get to the outside, he might try that Gramby. Now he just comes outside of him, comes around for a two-point reversal. So a 7 nothing lead for Kimling over Garrett Calavoto, the Tigers, at 106 pounds. Kimling came out of that and almost got Garrett on his back again, but Garrett fought through it and didn't get any back points on him. So, down to 34 seconds. So now dangerous or potentially dangerous position by Kimling on Calavota. They'll stop it and bring him back to middle. Garrett seems calm. I mean, he's like, he's still getting after, but he's he knows that he's still in this mess. He's got a lot of points to make up, but he's really working hard at trying to get some things done. Kimling looks like a big 106-pounder. He's broad in the shoulder. Yeah, very strong. There's a half his foot on him. Garrett. Rolls right through and comes out of it. Oh, and he gives him two points. And an escape then for Calavota, but he's going to trail 9-1. to one. <laughs> That'd be the quickest two points yeah, I've seen for quite a while. But they're back to their feet, and they go out of bounds. 11 seconds left here in the second period, down 9-1. to one. They'll be in a neutral position as they get back underway with 10 seconds remaining. Those wrestlers now forehead to forehead. Shot in there by Kimling. Now front headlock by Calavota. And another stall warning against Calavota. He had a front headlock on him, so surprising call, but it's going to cost him a point, and he trails 10-1. to 1. Back underway with one second left, and that will finish the second period in Calavota trailing here 10-1 to 1 in his matchup with Kimling of Concordia. He does what he's got to do. He's got to go big, so they start on their feet. He's down 10-1 to 1 here to start the third period. That time was a caution. It was a caution. could have been last time, right? So that would have been in second. Calavoda goes to that front headlock. He's trying to milk him down, and they go out of bounds. And we don't get called for stalling there. So we're going back to the middle back of the mat. Back to center and back to neutral. 
He's got the front headlock on him a couple of times. Oh, there's a deep shot in there by Kimling. Calamo tries to whip him through and go on across, but he gets caught again. He's on his back, and Kenlin's trying hard to pin him. A minute 40 left. Calavota has shown extreme strength to stay away from a pin. He has, but he's got this head and arm locked up good. Calavota tries to roll through. That's got to be choking him out big time. He goes back over. Now he's back on his back again. He's got to be losing air, so he's just kind of weakening a little bit, but he's still fighting hard. Wow. Kimling trying to work across, and now Calavota does get out of well, now he almost rolled right back into it. But he's going to lose three more points and trail 15-1 to one now. You want to talk about some guts. Whew. That head and arm was locked as tight for a long time. You start seeing spots when that's happening, and he still fought through it. That shows a lot of heart and a lot of strength. Emily working on top, chopping the arm down, 53 to work. Yeah, we both had him pretty much done when he was on his back, and he fought out of it, stays alive in this. Match in the third period here, down 15-1 to one to Kimling. When you, can, when you flip back up to your knees and you're about out and then you get pinched back down and you know it's even that much tighter, and then he was there for a good 10 mm-hmm. seconds yeah. and then finally got out of it again. Another caution on the start against Kimling. Kimling. 44 to work, third period. Kimling started on the left side. Garrett tries to get to his feet. Kimling chops that inside arm and keeps him from getting up. He's lifting that inside leg. Nothing there. 30 seconds left here in the third. Calavota trailing 15-1, to one, final period of the match. Kinling is like, got a very small waist and real broad shoulders. Look Strong out. young man. 20 seconds remains in the match. He's been impressive. Just a sophomore. What's more impressive is the guts and determination oh. of Garrett. Because no doubt. He has shown that he has that. Kimley had the ball and chain in there. Calavota breaks it. Two seconds left. He will lose 15-1, to 1, a major decision, but a major gutsy match by Calavota. It sure was. Good to see that in young freshman. It's, he's going he's gonna to go a long ways with an, an attitude of heart and strength like that. Well, we have a chance. We have some open weights coming up. Let's take a, a timeout. Back with Tiger Wrestling after this. Are you or a loved one suffering from a wound that won't heal? The new comprehensive wound care center at Clay County Medical Center offers advanced healing therapies, individual treatment plans, and proven clinical protocols to heal wounds that have resisted conventional treatment. Our team of specialists will assess the underlying cause of your non-healing wound and get you on the path to healing. Our wound care center can make an enormous difference in your quality of life. Visit ccmckscorg slash wound care for details. So the Tigers open at uh, 113, 120, 126. The Panthers had Jordan Anguish, Jr. at 113. Braxton Kendall at 120, a freshman. And Toby Walmeyer, a freshman at 126. And now we're about ready to go to 132 pounds. I don't know if there's some shenanigans going on. They had someone checking in. It would be Parker Tholstrup due up for the Tigers. The sophomore who was a state qualifier last year and State ranked this year at number five, and now they don't know what officials they talking with the coach has a big grin on his face. We're not sure what the what the scoop is now. The official smiling with him. So I'm not sure. Now we do have actually this is going to be. So they've switched around again. Oh, there they had to get their uh, open class Toby Walmart on the mat. That's what the problem was. Well, they were, they were kind of, you know, once you check in, you've checked in. So you got to wait for whoever's turn it is to see and then make your move. It's like a little bit of a chess match right? at times. So we do have Parker Tholstrip up now against Kate Anderson, a sophomore. is 4-17. and 17. Parker has mentioned fifth ranked in the state and 132 pounds in 4A, 21-7. and seven. Good shot in early by Tholstrup, and he's got an early takedown for two. Deep penetration. Now he's working on that sidearm chops. It gets that Lundy. Missed it. Going to the other side. Chops the arm on the right side. Almost had a chicken wing in. Missed it. He's down near the edge. Now he's got that in that time, Rocky. He kind of just got a little quick and went right on through the first time. Just underway in the first period for Parker Tholstrup. Now trying to tilt his opponent back. Can't quite get an angle. But does getting back on the mat to go to work. Had that chicken wing Lundy, and he tried to pull it in on the 
on the side and break him, pull him over the hip, and then he went to the opposite side. Still couldn't get it. Now he's got the far arm barred with the chicken wing. So now he's going to just drive that in and run it right over his ear. There's plenty of time to work on it. Taking his time, going Getting slow. back points. Now gets him now to he's his back. Him. Unable to keep him in position, but he keeps the chicken wing in good, in good position. He did. Ted Anderson did a good job of it. He flopped at just the right time. Now he's shaking him over again. This time a little more control. He's still a little high on him. Now he comes back and covers well and crosses faces ahead. Now he's got him good. Tiger pin for Parker Tholster, fifth ranked in the state at 132 pounds. He sticks Kate Anderson in the first period with 48 seconds left to go. Well, that was impressive. It was. That's Went to work. You said the first time he had him on his back and in position, and he just was a little too quick he and a little high. Too high. He just got him. Got a little too anxious, and he had to slow down. He did that the second time. Covered really well and got the pin. Now both coaches having a little stare down. Reed Ditter's going to check in. Concordia held their wrestler back to make sure Reed did check in. We're going to see. We so think we'll, maybe they're going to forfeit this match, but we're not positive. When they announced the lineups, they announced as if this would be an open weight class, and, and it, it is. is. So Reed Ditter will not get to wrestle tonight. He'll win by default. He's not too happy about that. No, he wanted to get on the mat and go. He's 27 and 12, the senior. This would have been the final tune-up before regionals next weekend and doesn't get that opportunity. So instead, they move Nathan Brown, a freshman, up to wrestle the Tigers freshman at 145, Leslie Kramer. And we're underway. So Leslie will go against Nathan Brown. It had been listed as an open class. Brown with a front headlock against Leslie early. Brown swings around, grabs that ankle, and gets that two-point takedown. Now he's got a cradle in. He's a long arm. He's got Leslie on her back. And oh, there's an early pin for Concordia. So Leslie Clank Kramer, a loss by fall at 145 pounds. Tigers next up will have Ethan Alquist, sophomore 17 and 14. He's taking on Kean Miller. Ethan's done some really good things this year. And boy, Concordia really playing a little cat and mouse with their check-ins right now. It's going to become comical. Ethan even looked over as if, am I going to have an phone? Oh, yeah, I will. So Ethan will take on Kean Miller. Freshman is 21 and 10. Alquist is sophomore, 17 and 14, and we are underway. Miller's a good-looking kid. He's got a lot of strength, but Alquist has got a little length on him. Right. He's not. He's no slouch himself. No. He's got some strength too. He's done some good things this yeah. year for the Tigers. He tries a little elbow shock, and nothing, nothing there. Fake shot in by the opponent head. Miller. Ethan tries an outside single, but it's not quite there. He gets caught in a front headlock. Now he's trying to get out of that. Miller trying to keep him milk down toward the mat. Ethan's keeping good elbow control so that he can't get it. Now he gets the wrist, pulls it to the mat, and then gets away. Good now, job. Now Ethan backs up toward the center circle to go back into action. A minute 19 to go first period. Tigers trail in the duel 28-12, and now we've got a little thumb in the eye action. Ethan got... Got a little thumb in his eye, so he stopped. Got, got it again by the Miller. Miller tries a low single. Ethan counters that, pulls the leg away. Now there's a duck under on Ethan. Ethan's trying to pull him back to the mat. He was just too strong. Couldn't do it. Still fighting, though. No, no points given up. Right now, Miller's on the outside. He's got a front head and a rear leg. He's trying to pull it together almost like a cradle. Then he swoops around, and he's trying to get behind to get the two on Ethan. To the two-point takedown for Miller, and Alquist will trail 2 nothing. Now the escape for Ethan, 2-1. to one. Good wrist control, came up quick, got away. Now they're back to the middle of the mat. Down 2-1 to one here, 33 seconds left in the, in the period. Ethan Alquist, sophomore, 152 pounds here. Miller again goes to that lower outside leg. Ethan trying to counter it. Right now it's a scramble, it's back and forth. Ethan's kind of trying to come around the... Top side, got the far leg. Kind of an odd situation here, and he cuts across. Oh, and he missed it just barely. Gets taken down again. Eight seconds left. He'll trail four to one. If he catches him as they rolled across, it could have been a whole different story, but instead he'll trail by three. He was trying to kick the leg out, but Miller did a good job and held that leg in there, and he couldn't get it away, so he just rolled right across. So Alquist will trail 4-1 to one at 152 pounds for the Tigers. A lot of action there in the first period. Yeah, really. We're going to choose bottom. Ethan takes the down position. Miller's going to 
be on top. See which side he starts on. Left side. Ethan got away real quick after that first takedown. Miller knocks him down with the left elbow, though, and gets that hand control. Ethan's got to get that arm back. 28 to 12, the score in the duel. Concordia leaving the score in this match for Ethan Alquist. He trails 4 to 1 just starting the second period. Well, we're trying to get a Lundy chicken on him. Ethan's caught the arm and kind of squeezing it around his wrist so he can't get it dug in there. So he pulls it back out. 90 seconds to work, second period. Ethan Alquist working from underneath. His choice as Miller deferred to the final period. So Ethan took the down position, had an escape earlier. Well, it was a good choice because, you know, when he first got taken down, man, he popped right back up right. and got away. This time Miller got that Lundy arm in, and now Ethan's been really fighting. Now Miller does a roll through and pulls him right on through, and he's getting some cheap back points. Ethan rolls out of it and gets up back to his base, but he gives up two two back points. So Alquist down 6-1, to one, under a minute to go, second period. Near the edge of the mat, Alquist trying to get his base back again, and Stretches one arm, but he's been unable to get both arms free to make some work. Miller doing a good job just smothering Ethan. He's got a chicken wing in trying to get that far arm. He drinks him right on out of bounds. 41 to work, second period. Down 6-1 to one now for Ethan Alquist. At 152 pounds against the Panthers, Kean Miller. Good time for a restart. Now let's get rebooted. Get to your feet. There's an outside switch this time. Try and get him from chopping that left arm. He he missed it by just a little bit. Couldn't get his hips through. He no, broke down. Miller trying to put a half in now on the far side. Now works across to that side. We can't really see where he's got his hand. It's still in there for the half or not. Now he gives it up. Still with a tight waist. 19 to work, second period. There's a cross base, nothing there. Miller right now just kind of covering the hips hard. Knows he's up 6-1, to one, just kind of wasting a lot of time. Just going side to side and acting like he's doing stuff. Now, he Ethan got his hips three. free, but still in control of the arm is Miller with well, now no time left on the second period clock. Now what Coach Begorish wanted out of that, that period. Right. Start him down, wanted him to get away. Now we're going to see what Miller does if Miller chooses the bottom. So Ethan's got to get something going offensively here and get a couple turning turned in cup times. Or does it set out? Ethan follows, comes in behind. Miller reaches back for the leg. He's cross facing him, but he's got he's really high on him. He's trying to. Miller got some control of that leg too as he reached across, and now Alquist, as you said, a little high, trying to get back in control. Now he does break the arm free, kind of gets that power half in, and kind of gets himself back in the situation where he needs to be. Now he's got to stay heavy on Miller's really strong upper body, so Ethan's working hard at trying to get something going here. Down to a minute 30 left to go in the match. Alquist trailing 6-1. to one. It's Pretty high on him. He's trying a far side cross face. Miller grabs the wrist of Ethan. Just kind of, again, burning some time. Now he goes an outside switch on Ethan and switches in pretty quickly and gets two-point reversal. And now trying to put the half in and step across. Ethan gets out of that, but trails 8-1 to one here in the final period. Down to a minute to go. Miller's going to ride in pretty heavy on the hips now. Does he's trying to half, and he'll go from the other, this side to the other side. Ethan's head gears kind of down in his nose, and yeah, that's not helping. No fun. Miller tries a half, pulls it out, keeps the knee in the hole. Ethan gets to a base, but gets chopped back down again. Thirty-five to work in the match. Alquist trails here, eight to one. He's got to really get something going. Only 30 seconds left, but he's down 8-1. to one. And He's fighting both Miller and his headgear right now. It's right down below his chin. 20 seconds left in the third period. Miller's kind of sweeping that, that back leg, pulling it up. He's trying to either get a cradle hooked in here. He can't quite reach his own hand. Ethan's grabbed his hand, so he can't. Nine seconds left in the match. Ethan Alquist trailing 8-1 to one, down to 4. Now he breaks the hand apart. But Alcus will lose a 8-1 match to Kean Miller of the Concordia Panthers. It's a freshman at 21 and 22 and 10 now. Not built like a freshman, no. So an 8-1 loss for Ethan Alquist at 152. Take a 30-second timeout. We'll have another match on the way next. 
When Precision Ag equipment isn't working right, Central Valley Ag customers call their Precision Ag helpline. Growers that have their precision planting, Ag Leader, Yield 360 technology through us get support when every minute matters. CVA Precision Ag Manager Keith Byerly says using AgriSync, they see what you see. Via their camera on the back of their phone. Talk to your CVA field sales agronomist about the Precision Ag helpline. You and Central Valley Ag, growing agriculture together. Back once again, we bring you to Concordia. Sean Little now on the mat. He is uh, faced off against Leighton Kendall. They moved Little up to 170. Hunter Schrader, their state-ranked wrestler, had an open match. They did a little shuffling on the Tiger side to give Little a chance against Leighton Kendall, Jr. at 11-15 and 15 on the year. This will be a good match here. Little is a 6-24 and 24 sophomore. Very similar body types as they come onto the mat. Near the edge right now, a minute 30 to go in this first period. No score. Now Little back to his feet. He's kind of broken down toward the mat. Little tried a, a pretty good little shot right there, and Kendall kind of blocked it. Now he's got the lower leg, and Sean's going to have to power his leg back. He's working on the hand. Now the tripod's out of bounds. Got one leg up, and he front trips him and gets him taken down. Little Kendall gets two there. Two-nothing lead on the Tigers. Sean Little. Sophomore will work from underneath with 54 to work in this. Good hand hand control. Sean got good hand control. Got his hips up and got away and got an escape. So just down by one now. Two to one here with 40 seconds left in the first. Head to head right in the middle of the mat. Now an underhook in there by... Kendall. Oh, you got the head and arm. Use your hips. Now step through. Out. Little had the head and arm on the ground and did use these hips, but just rolled right through it. Real close there. So back to center they go with 25 to work in this first period. Sean Little trails 2-1. to one. Duck under by Kendall. He missed the hand, so right now Sean Little's trying to get that head pushed under and come around the back. Kendall now goes to a double leg. Down to seven seconds. And the elevates, comes through the back side and gets the two points. Goes right into a half, takes John Little to his back. And, and there's it with one second left in the first period. I am not liking this issue. I'm just going <laughs> to just throw it out there because I'm not going to get fined. <laughs> I think that, yeah, that was very quick stick, right? With the actually, there's point two is what was left on the scoreboard clock when the when the pin was was called. Tigers are open at 182, so Robert Trost comes out and wins by a forfeit. Junior for the Panthers, and now Zach Bowlinger for the Tigers, a freshman at 195, will take on Kenzie Bartlett, a senior wrestler for the Panthers. All right. And we are back underway. Bollinger, freshman at 2-9, and nine, wrestling at 195. Both wrestlers lock up. Back in they come. Coming hard. Heavy heavy with the hands. And Tried to miss. set up a throw and miss. Leslie goes in on a double leg, but then Bollinger blocks it off. Trying to work in behind for the takedown. Comes in, comes in behind, gets the two. So a 2 nothing lead for Zach Bollinger. Zach staying heavy, heavy on the top. Shoots that half. Tries to grab the inside leg and elevate it, but he couldn't get it. She ducked it under. Now the half again. To the far side. He's got a pretty good angle here. Gets her turn. He missed the half. He got out of it. That goes right back to it, though. With a minute 15 to work and a 2 nothing lead for Zach Bollinger. Trying to stay heavy and heavy, and they're close to the out of bounds. Now works to the opposite side. Trying to scoot her back into the mat. Has the half of that. Deep. Now gets Leslie to her back. And there's a Tiger pin for Zach Bollinger. So a Tiger win by fall at 195 pounds. Just take another 30-second break, Benny. We'll come back and we have Keegan McDonald ready to go next. Truck drivers are the lifeblood of America. From bringing the crop from the field to the market groceries and raw materials. You can see semi-trucks moving in America one load at a time. TSI Kansas is your local trucking company that's doing their part to keep America moving forward. 
If you're a driver looking for great pay and benefits, then you need to call 785-632-5183. Tiger wrestling on a Thursday night here in Concordia. Keegan McDonald now going at 220 pounds. This will be uh, the one of two final matches left for the Tigers. We knew it would be a quick night with all the injuries at both sides with some open weight classes. Both wrestlers right now tied up. He's taking on Dalton Owen, a freshman. McDonald comes at 18 and 12, a sophomore for the Tigers. Dalton's staying really tight inside. Keegan's been trying to work inside of him, and he can't quite get that inside like he wants on the tie, but he's heavy on the hands, trying to stay. There's a fake shot by Dalton, kind of went down, and Keegan stopped at that. So a little head slapping and going. They're staying in the middle. minute left here in the first, no score. The circle right in the middle, still working for some some control. So the shot by, attempt by McDonald, doesn't hit. Dalton recovered a little too soon, so there's a two-on-one rushing by Keegan and can't get anything done there. 45 to work first period. No score as of yet. Keegan McDonald against Dalton Owen of Concordia. Owen, a freshman, but a big old boy. Tall and pretty broad, too. Let's see he's got four or five inches on, on Keegan. No doubt. Dalton tries a little low level again. Keegan stops that. Back to center. Little head tap. There's now a double leg by McDonald. Keep going. He's got it. Got to come up. He did. Got the two points. With 15 to work, he goes up 2 nothing. Good. Just power double. Just lowered his elevation. Chicken wing in there. He's got a wing in. He's trying to get it, but it's tries to put the far arm, and he couldn't reach the far arm. Five seconds left. Keegan McDonald will lead 2 nothing going into the second period. Then he was talking about the uh, power double he put in there. How strong that was. It was good. He lowered his elevation and exploded to him and did a great job. Ended not like he wanted, but he still got the two points. He didn't get it, take him the way he wanted. It ended up going the opposite way because uh, Dalton kind of countered, and he just said, okay, I'll go that way, and he got the two. Back underway as McDonald is in the up position to begin. He leads 2-0. Got him broke down. He's trying to dig that chicken wing in. He had it in there a couple of times late in that first period once he took him down. Dalton's just that much longer than him. He's having a kind of a tough time of getting that, that chicken wing in and reaching the far arm. It looks like now he thinks, okay, let me get the far arm first, and then I'll work it in. But Dalton gets, uh, gets counters that and gets his far arm broke away again. And at 30 left, second period, Keegan McDonald leads 2 nothing, riding on top right now. Keegan's staying heavy on the hips and keeping him down. He's trying a little power half. It's not there. He puts that, goes back to the other side. Got wrist control and just trying to stay heavy on the hips and keeping him under control. But Dalton's so long, when he gets to his knees, Keegan's having a hard time controlling him, so he's really working hard to keep him flat on that mat. Keegan with his eyes locked right on Coach Michael Patnode on the sideline there, so maybe giving us some tips, but he's also been warned for stalling. 49 to work, second period, a 2 nothing. Keegan McDonald lead. I don't know how you can get warm by stalling. You had a half, a chicken wing, a far arm. I, I would agree. If I could name 15 <laughs> offensive moves that he's tried. I'm sure, he's a little bit heavy on the hips. And he doesn't want to get off of him. He gets outside, Dalton gets his hips up, then he's going to get in trouble. So he's kind of working side to side. Dalton hadn't doing, he's not doing much either on the bottom, but right now exactly. Keegan. Kind of trying to dig that chicken wing again. Not there. 15 seconds left, second period. Again, 2 nothing. McDonald leaves it. Has wrist control underneath. Still trying to, Benny said, dig the chicken wing in, but no one is not exposing anything for him. Well, he's not going to. If he doesn't now, he finally gets stalled. Oh. So a point is awarded. Oh, that was uh, Owen that was warned for stalling. I was stalling. wondering if that wasn't because we just thought it was because it was group on red, we'll right visitor, but being Concordia's red, they're going to be red. That makes more sense, yeah. yeah. So it's good for McDonald. He leads 3 nothing, going to the final period. We're underway. He starts on the bottom there. He gets down and kind of comes back. He stands back up. Gets thrown back down to the mat, but he's still working to get back up again. Right back to his feet. Now tries to hit a little switch. Now back to his feet once more. 
They roll toward the edge of the mat. McDonald leading 3-0. They're about two, two feet from the edge. Tries to come up again. Now they're back more closer toward center. Dalton tries to cross-face cradle. He's got it locked up. He's pulling it back. Keegan's doing a good job, and he countered it and bellied back down, so he has not given up any back points here. The minute 13 left in the match. Now he's able to break the hands. And blew his feet once again as Keegan McDonald and broke back down to the mat once more. Coach thought he had he got blood. I don't wonder how long before he sees that. There's that cradle he's locked that up cradle again. Locked up. He's going to get two back points out of it. Owen, that is, for Concordia. So Keegan McDonald now leads by just one, three to two. Yeah. Cross face cradle. Not there. Keegan comes up to his feet. Gets the reverse. Not quite. He couldn't get the leg out. 35 seconds left, and now the blood that Benny just talked about is noticed. And that was before he gave him the two uh, points for the exactly. cradle. So they'll clean that up. Let's take a timeout while we have uh, the chance to. We'll come back with more from Concordia. The Ray's Apple Market app continues to save customers money, and it's the best way to stretch your grocery dollars. Over 11,000 users are taking advantage of the instant coupons, the deal of the week, and reward points. You can also view the entire weekly ad on the app, so it's convenient to add items to your list along with the digital coupons for available products. The Ray's Apple Market app is easy to use and even easier to save you money. Well, it's already been a year for me here at Union State Bank. Time sure does fly when you get to work with the best customers. If you're looking to add one cow or 100 cows, one acre or 1,000 acres, or the line of credit it takes today to operate on, give me a call. I'll come out and go through your options that serve you best. So from your kitchen table, your shop, or your pickup, you get the details on your loan to benefit your farm. I'm Ryan Hendricks with Union State Bank, member FDIC. Back once again in Concordia, along with our studio engineer, Bernie Fancella. Benny Wallace with us on a Thursday night, homecoming week for the Tigers. Actually, it was homecoming tonight here in Concordia before the matches got going. Yeah, pretty good crowd here. It has been. Keegan McDonald lead 3-2, to two, and out of the blood timeout for Dalton Owen, Owen is opponent of freshman for the Concordia Panthers. We are back underway. Keegan from underneath. Getting to his feet again. If he does. Oh, that had to. That's close. <laughs> Looks hard on his leg, but Keegan's fighting, and he runs away from him and gets out, so he gets one. He's up 4-2 four to, four to two here with 20 seconds left. Oh, deep shot in by Owen. Good balance. Falls out of it. Good strength by his hips. Pounded him hard. And now a takedown for McDonald as he held the head to the mat that circled in behind with six seconds left. He leads six to two now. Dalton Owen was down two to four on Keegan. Shot a good shot. Keegan hit him hard with the hips. Broke him to the mat, spun around, got the two points to win at six to two. So Keegan McDonald at two twenty a winner on a Thursday night. He's nineteen and twelve after that win. Nice match. It was. A little fight from both those guys to make it interesting, and Keegan McDonald holds on and gets it done. And now the Tigers' Logan McDonald, 23-10 and 10 on the year. And he has a junior, Trevor Wilson, who is 1-9. Logan's done some really good things. We saw the last two years the, the promise, taking your lumps as a heavyweight, as a young heavyweight, and now he is standing in and 23 wins on the year. It's a good year. He's going to get... Keep- Got to keep going. Now's the time of year to really come in strong. And I wish some of these other guys would have had matches, but, you know, they just got to go back to the room, keep pounding on each other, and get better. A week from tomorrow, regional wrestling will be held this year in Lindsburg for the Tigers at Smoky Valley High School. We're underway at the heavyweight. Both wrestlers trying to set a throw. They're near the edge. Trevor comes out hard for Concordia, gets a head and arm. Right now, Logan's like, no, I'm not going to have it. I'm going to try it myself. Oh, goes right down to a single leg. I'm going to chuck it off and low, go lower level and pick up a single leg. And a two-point, two-nothing lead with a two-point takedown. Now he allows the escape, and they get back in the way. Trevor starts coming up, and Logan just cuts him. Now he goes back and gets that lower level again. He's got that leg. He's got. A, he's running the pipe, lifts it. Oh, almost oh, to his back. He's back, but he comes to scramble through and gets two. Four to one now, Logan McDonald leading. 
Logan almost got him on his back, but the kid popped good. Trevor did, and, and Logan had to go around and cut it before he lost it completely. A minute 10 to work first period. Four to one, Logan McDonald with the lead. Got wrist control underneath right now. Maybe trying to set up a ball and chain. Hard to do on a big guy, but sometimes you can reach it. He's trying to reach through and get it, but he's just too far away. So he just elevates the leg, rips him right to his back. Got him good here. There it is. There's a tiger pin for Logan McDonald. So the Tigers finish with a win by fall over Trevor Wilson. That's Logan McDonald with the win at the heavyweight for the Tigers. Let's take a timeout. We'll come back and take a look at the match tonight against the Concordia Panthers, and we'll set the stage for what's still to come for the Tigers with regionals on the way next week. And stay with us. More from Concordia after this. If you're looking for a solution for living a better life at home with the aid of durable medical equipment, you've come to the right place. Patterson Health Mart has a wide selection of durable equipment such as nebulizers, CPAP machines, wheelchairs, diabetic supplies, and so much more. Patterson Health Mart Pharmacy has the best durable medical supplies from the most respected companies. Come in and find the equipment that will make your stay at home comfortable at Patterson Health Mart Pharmacy and Radio Shack in Clay Center. The Citizens National Bank is ready to provide you with a great borrowing experience, whether you're buying, building, or refinancing a home. We offer first-time home buyer, FHA, VA, and conventional home loans with competitive interest rates on a national level and flexible term options to fit your financial situation. With little money down, we can assist you with getting into your dream house. The Citizens National Bank, mortgage loans with the personal attention you deserve. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Many seed companies claim to offer the latest genetics, but how many have tested those genetics in soils just like yours? The Oldie Seed Know to Grow Research Program has fully tested the latest seed genetics in soils that are right in your neighborhood. The Oldie Seed Know to Grow Program can recommend the best performing hybrids from technologies like Enlist, Extend, and Liberty Link that will optimize the yield and profit of every acre on your farm. Contact Oldie Seed today. It's time for your UBT Top 5. Saving money can be hard without a plan, the right tools, and accountability. Here are the top five things you can do to begin saving in 2019. Start small. Set specific savings goals. Create a savings plan of action. Set boundaries so you don't stray from your plan. And utilize banking tools such as scheduling automatic transfers. Then watch your savings grow. Visit ubankonline.com for more information or talk to a UBT representative to start a plan today. Equal housing lender, FDIC. Back once again in Concordia, Rocky Downing along with Bernie Fancella back at the studio. Benny Wallace with us as the Clay Center Tigers lose the duel 49-27, to but they finish bang, bang, bang with three wins for uh, the heavyweight classes, 195, 220, and the heavyweight. Yeah, we were just getting fired up. We didn't just loop right back through. A double duel tonight <laughs> for the Tigers. Uh, the Clay Center Tigers, uh, again, with the loss, 49-27 in the duel. Uh, we'll take you through the matches. Garrett Calavota lost to a uh, 21-9 and sophomore, Sage and Kimling, but Garrett really fought hard to not get pinned. He was in a bad place almost from the very get-go, it seemed like. You know, when you want to put together a good wrestling team, you, you in tournament time you can't give up pins and that kid could have gave up a pin from the first period and then when he gets caught in the third period usually they're about out of gas and he just gutted it out and that's the kind of kid you gotta have yeah it was it was impressive what he was able to stay away from the freshman 19 and 16 now in the year tigers were open at 113 and 120 and 126 uh reed knitter um Actually, let's go ahead and jump up to Leslie Kramer, who ended up wrestling Nathan Brown at 145. Uh, Leslie lost by a fall. Ethan Alquist lost an 8-1 decision to an impressive freshman, uh, Kean Miller, at 152 pounds. Uh, Ethan has had uh, 17 victories this season, now 17-15 and 15 with a loss for the sophomore. Uh, Hunter Schrader had a bye. The Tigers went open at 160, and then Sean Little faced Leighton Kendall, would end up losing by a fall. Tigers were open at one. 82, Robert Trost in that spot for Concordia. Tiger wins tonight. Started off with Parker Tholstrup, the uh, number five ranked wrestler in 4A at 132 pounds, came out and made short work of Kate Anderson, uh, the sophomore, 22 and 7 now, and fifth ranked in the state. And that just shows you why. He came out and took care of business. Was a little quick, you know, in the first time through on his move, but the second time 
cleaned it up and got the pen. Reed Nitter did not get to wrestle tonight. I, the senior was frustrated, you could see, when he walked out. It had been listed that it likely would have a match, and then they, they moved some weight classes around. So Reed wins by a forfeit. The Tigers also then got those uh, three straight wins to finish. Zach Bollinger went over Kinsey Bartlett. The freshman at 195 got it done and got the pin. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Keegan McDonald uh, would win 6-2 to two over Dalton Owen, and probably the highlight match of the night as far as just competitive between both sides. I think so. I mean, to, for an interest of the spectator, that was a really good match to watch. It was a, a lot of action going on, and it was a really exciting match to see. Again, Keegan wins it 6-2. to two. He's now 19-12, and 12, the sophomore. And then Logan McDonald uh, just, uh, it was interesting. There were a couple of moves that his opponent, Trevor Wilson, made, and Logan just said he was just too strong for Wilson. And then he had a move working on the mat, and all of a sudden he just said, oh, I'll just roll you over and pin you. And he, and he did. Well, I can tell you right now, you sit there and you watch the front of that match, and that Trevor Wilson from Concordia came out, tries a head and arm on Logan, and when Logan was a freshman, <laughs> he went to the mat with that. But he, he's stronger, he's smarter. He just went lower level, immediately dropped his hips down, got that leg, picked it up. So, I mean, you can tell the maturity of somebody when they come this far. That's a great point, Benny, on, on Logan and the way he was able to work around that and with that and eventually get the pin. And the Tigers uh, lose 49-27. It's hard to believe a week from tomorrow we're going to be at Smoky Valley High School calling postseason wrestling. It's going fast. It really has, you know. Although the Tigers, you know, they're not completely loaded. You know, the gun's not all the way full, but the bullets that are in it, or they got some good ones. They'll get Red Coppice back. Uh, I think it's, I've mentioned before, but Cam Osborne and Keegan Brownell, seniors on this team, have not had the senior year they ever wanted. Uh, injuries took them out and, and unable to go. But what has been so impressive to me, and I'm not surprised knowing Cam and Keegan both, but what has been so impressive is the fact they have stayed with this team through practices. They were here tonight. They'll be at postseason and, and helping and becoming, I guess, your extra coaches. But that's not easy to do as a senior to stick it out when you're, you're wanting to be on that match so badly. Yeah, and it just shows that they, you know, they really have faith in the, their other teammates, and, and that's just a really cool thing to have. Yeah, really. I, I'm just very, very impressed by the way they've handled all of that to deal with as seniors uh, for the Tigers. 49-27 the final. Concordia over Clay Center in the duel. We'll have coverage next week, every match live from the regionals and from the state championships, Smoky Valley High School next Friday afternoon. Benny, always appreciate the help on the air with uh, Tiger Wrestling. Our studio engineer is Bernie Fancilla. This is Rocky Downing telling you to enjoy the rest of your sports Thursday.